into the Gulf of Uraba. A boat speed carrying armed men and drugs. The leader goes by the name The Old Man. He's in his 30s, in the world of trafficking, that is considered old. He's overseeing the drop-off of 30 kilos of cocaine before the drugs are smuggled abroad. Producing near record amounts of cocaine, Colombia is the center of the international drugs trade. The old man has agreed to speak if we don't use his name or show his face. He says drug shipments leave at all hours from this corner of northwest Colombia. Mazes of streams and rivers. The guns are for protection from pirates, Marxist rebels, and other smugglers who kill for cocaine. The boat moves fast to dodge Colombia's Coast Guard. The drugs belong to a cartel. The old man is paid to transport them. One link in a global multi-billion dollar business. He transports cocaine and sells drugs in his hometown with a dream of one day leaving this life behind. One afternoon's work moving these kilos will pay him the same as a legal job in one year. With so much money and power to be had, he can't see the drug war ever ending. They've arrived to the drop-off point. Others will pick the kilos up and later transport them out to the Caribbean, where they will be trafficked to the world beyond. The old man knows this life comes with a risk, a risk that he may never reach old age. You see this graffiti across much of Colombia, in particular here in the country's northwest where I am, AGC. That stands for Alta Defensas Gaitanistas de Colombia. But the group is more commonly known as the Gulf Clan, South America's largest cocaine trafficking organization. And the graffiti warns that they're here. Its tentacles stretch across the country. It's responsible for land theft, illegal gold mining, corruption, extortion, and murder. Thousands of men are estimated to be under its command. Its stronghold is here in northwest Colombia, the zone of Uraba, a rich land of jungles, mountains, and bananas. The Gulf Clan has made its power known through the so-called armed strikes, ordering the shutdowns of towns and entire regions for days on end. Those who venture out, those who open their businesses, risk murder. The Colombian government, with the backing of the United States CIA, has launched a massive multi-year operation against the Klan. Hundreds of Klan members have been killed, nearly 3,000 captured. In November 2021, the Klan's leader, Dairo Antonio Usaga, better known as Otoniel, was arrested. Y este golpe is solamente comparable con la caída de Pablo Escobar en los años 90. Dairo Antonio Uso Guadaví, 
con cédula 71.980. Before the country's truth commission, Otoniel testified that the Klan was bribing generals, police officers and politicians. Muchas gracias. Bien, hemos recibido entonces... Naming 63 prominent Colombians on his payroll. Before he could give more information, he was extradited to the United States to stand trial for cocaine trafficking. Quiero informarles que ha sido extraditado, alias Otoniel. So, I agree with to his thousands of military-clad followers sent a ripple effect of drugs. Police say a trafficker known as Evil Little Guy has taken over the Gulf Clan. millones de dólares por alias Siopas y alias Chiquito Mal. Here in Uraba, it feels like the clan is in control. A man who has worked with the Gulf clan agrees to talk to us on the condition we blur his face. He says much of the cocaine that leaves this part of Colombia is smuggled amid the legal exports, like bananas. La droga es lo que ellos mandan con los contenedores. Todos los días sale, papi. Todos los días. Cuando uno dice que se cayó culano, que se cayó, ellos ya están listos. Ya hay más cantidad de droga en el otro lado que lo que se cayó. The clan's control of the zone is near total, he says. They have informants everywhere, watching and reporting back. Aquí, tía, hay, aquí hay ojos desde que salimos hasta aquí donde estoy. A mí no me ha matado porque no me han querido matar. The business thrives because there are people out there who purchase and consume the drug. The biggest single market for cocaine remains the United States. But cocaine is spreading across the planet to Asia, Africa, the Middle East. If they had consumers, this would have ended up for a long time. You know. They are the best consumers of the gringos. The Klan has made it known that it wants to talk to the government. This man doubts that drug trafficking can ever be ended by negotiations. The huge fortunes to be made are too big. ¿Sabe por qué no va a pasar aquí? Porque este es el mejor negocio, la coca es el mejor negocio que hay en Urabá. Y nadie lo va a dejar. ¿Usted dejaría un negocio bueno de buenas a primeras, de chimba? No. The clear way to kill the business would be to legalize the drugs, he says, something that would deprive the mafias of their incomes. But he doesn't see that happening either. Y la droga la legalizar, te quiebra el negocio, pero para, para a nadie le sirve. ¿Cuándo va a pasar? Nunca. Porque todo es un negocio. La guerra es un negocio, la coca es un negocio. Eso no lo va a cambiar de un día para otro. No va a cambiar. Esta guerra todavía cubra muchos muertos. The Gulf Clan announces it will pay a reward for every police officer killed. It's called the Plan of the Gun. Dozens of attacks take place on police officers across the country. But it's fiercest here in the Northwest. It's a deadly reminder of Pablo Escobar, who offered cash for every dead police officer. A partir de hoy, the pace of attacks accelerates. It feels like the zone is spinning out of control. Who really is in control? On a hot Wednesday in Tulbo, someone throws a grenade at a police station. It misses, explodes, but causes no damage. It's here we join the police as they patrol the zone, looking for members of the Gulf clan, trying to find them before they're found. Captain Camacho asks us not to show his face. La pistola consiste en atacar a cualquier policía que esté mal ubicado, que dé oportunidad para que lo, lo ataque. Es atacado. Arma de juego lo atacan, que es lo más común. O también se puede utilizar el. Cuando hay plan pistola también utilizan artefactos explosivos también. Bueno, la pena está familiar, además. No, claro, la gente tiene temor. Temor hasta de, para acudir a la policía, porque pues 
en cualquier momento pueden resultar también afectados de manera indirecta. Nosotros siempre tenemos la, la, la convicción y la esperanza de que todo cambie, de que podamos ejercer nuestra función y nuestra labor de manera normal, porque pues nosotros nos dedicamos a, a ayudar al pueblo y pues lo que uno siempre quiere es que lo pueda ayudar sin necesidad de tener un riesgo hacia otras personas porque no le estamos haciendo mal a nadie. Y claro, siempre guardamos la esperanza de que, de que esto cambie y podamos nosotros ejercer nuestra labor de manera normal. Camacho says that the region has become more dangerous since the capture of Otoniel, the former head of the Gulf clan. Pues estamos en riesgo los, los policías de acá de, que trabajamos en esta región. Se ha derivado una serie de atentados contra la, la fuerza pública de manera indiscriminada, donde hay varios policías que de manera inocente, lejanos del conflicto, han sido atacados por, por la delincuencia. This Wednesday there's another attack, this time on a police station in Kurilao. We arrived to the scene minutes later. Men shot at the building with an assault rifle and tossed grenades. Luckily, no one is injured. Another attack by the clan. Pues ahorita está más complicado ahorita eso que estamos viviendo. Pero anteriormente no estaba así tan tan palpable la la problemática. Más bien más controlada por sectores. Ahorita está es a nivel general. Their enemy hides among the civilian population. Just as the police look to the community for information on the Gulf Clan, the Gulf Clan is looking for information on the police. Llamados puntos, como lo dicen, se son denominados aquellas personas que se ubican solamente estratégicamente en varios sectores del del municipio con el fin de informar a esta gente del 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 Clan del Golfo, los cuales cometen los hechos terroristas. Police believe these attacks are designed to pressure a new Colombian government to negotiate. Pues al parecer, al parecer ese grupo Clan del Golfo quiere como negociar con el gobierno nacional y al no ser tenido en cuenta, pues están tomando represalias contra el mismo mismo estado y pues utilizan afectando el brazo más fuerte que es la la fuerza pública del estado. Y eso es lo que están haciendo en estos momentos, haciéndose sentir, haciéndose como que son un grupo que realmente requiere atención y no los pueden dejar por fuera los acuerdos de paz. Al teléfono a la estación. Before this day is over, there will be another attack on police. A car bomb will explode next to a police station, injuring three officers. On the day of the inauguration of Colombia's newest president, Gustavo Petro, the Gulf clan announces a total ceasefire and asks for talks with the new government. With record production of cocaine and spiraling violence, many are demanding a new approach to the war on drugs, including Colombia's new president. Dr. Gustavo Francisco Petro Urrego. In his inaugural speech, President Petro pledged to change how the war on drugs is fought. Es hora de una nueva convención internacional que acepte que la guerra contra las drogas ha fracasado rotundamente. Que ha dejado un millón de latinoamericanos asesinados, la mayoría colombianos. Durante estos últimos 40 años. Petro wants to move the focus away from militarily trying to destroy the supply of drugs to lowering consumption, so reducing demand for cocaine. His supporters have urged legalization of illegal drugs as one possible solution, so depriving the mafias of the tremendous profits the black market provides. The US has already says it does not favor decriminalization. Que la guerra contra las drogas fortaleció las mafias y debilitó los estados. Se va extraditado sin Petro is encouraging members of the Gulf clan to surrender, hand over information and so receive shortened prison terms. He stopped short of offering a peace process. One reason for the Gulf Clan's strength is the near record amount of cocaine being produced. Colombia has been exporting cocaine since the 1970s. 
Despite billions in US aid and military training to fight cocaine over the past two decades, Colombia now produces more of the drug than any other country, registering record outputs in recent years. In July, the White House released figures showing Colombia producing nearly 1,000 tons of cocaine, nearly four times the amount made a decade ago. Billions are to be made. It's also a great honor for us to... A kilo of cocaine costs just a few thousand dollars in Colombia. In the US, that same kilo is worth $40,000. By the time it reaches Australia, the kilo is now worth over $100,000. With so much cocaine, countries around the world are reporting record seizures of the drug. And that is translating into overdoses across the world. Cocaine-involved deaths in the US jumped by 25% last year to nearly 25,000. It's a brutal hike into the mountains, a jungle path where snakes cross. We finally made it. It was an hour and a half walking up the mountainside. I'm now drenched in sweat, but we're here. We're here in this field of coca. And this is just one field that holds some of the tens and tens of thousands of hectares of coca that are in this country. This is Hector's field of coca, the raw material used to make cocaine. This farmer says it's the only crop that can make him a steady income and that he can transport through these mountains far from any roads. Ah, sí, usted tiene que conseguir muelas para poderla sacar hacia la carretera. Y si usted está, digamos, a tres horas, cuatro de camino, ¿usted qué se va a poner a sacar una bolsa de yuca por la carretera? No da, a la vía tercial no da. He doesn't earn much after he's paid off the laborers to pick the coca and chemicals and gasoline needed to turn the leaves into coca paste, the first step in becoming cocaine. Just a few hundred dollars every couple of months. He says the Gulf clan controls the zone. Ácido nítrico, utiliza cal. O sea, los grupos ilegales son los dueños de esa zona, son los son los de las regiones. No, pues normal que usted esto no lo puede vender a otro particular. Que usted siempre tiene que vender la es al al grupo ilegal, ¿sí me entiende? Colombia has seen coca production shoot up in the past decade to record levels, a sign of the government's weak hold over much of the country. As illegal groups and the Gulf clan have grabbed control of different parts of Colombia, they've encouraged a surge in new coca crops. The White House estimates there are some 234,000 hectares of coca in Colombia, just down from a record 245,000 hectares in 2020. This translates into potentially billions of dollars in revenues for the Gulf clan. Sí, la, la siembra ha aumentado mucho ya en los últimos años y ha aumentado más. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué será? Porque, como vuelvo y le digo, la agricultura no vale nada. Y el gobierno nunca les ha brindado un apoyo al, al campesino, al campo, de que vea, este fruto, digamos, lo va a exportar, este va a valer tanto. No, no hay esa garantía. He keeps the field small so as not to attract the attention of the police. But if they do come and destroy his coca, he plans on planting new crops as soon as they move on. La policía donde le encuentra esto uno lo arranca o le quema la caleta, le sale el, el caleteadero. Ah, por ahí los, al año o los dos años vuelven a pasar, pero ya uno ha sembrado y ha vuelto a raspar otra vez. A storm has knocked down his so-called laboratory, where he turns the coca leaves into coca paste. Like all of these rustic coca labs, it's next to a stream where he dumps the residuals from the cocaine production. Thousands of tons of waste byproducts of cocaine are estimated to go into the streams of Colombia. I ask him if he would ever use cocaine. Yo con solo saber lo que eso lleva, todos los químicos que eso lleva, hermano, yo no me huele una cosa de eso ni por qué. <laughs> he would like to stop growing coca, but the government would need to help him move off this illegal crop. De cultivar esta hoja de coca tenía que ser que el gobierno nosotros nos diera un un proyecto muy bueno a cambio de esto, algo que nos mejore la calidad de vida. Pero el gobierno nosotros nunca, o sea, como campesinos no nos cumplen y nos da eso tampoco, entonces tenemos que seguir en esta lucha con esta mata. He's heard talk that the leaf might be legalized. He knows what that will mean for the price of his crops. Usted sabe que sí, eso no se sabe. Llega el día menos pensado que esto lo legalizan, pero no queda valiendo nada. Decidido a llevarlos, ojalá pueda, a un país en paz. President Petro has pledged a large crop substitution program that showed promise before being abandoned by the previous government. 
Thousands of farmers ripped out their coca in return for government help in transitioning to a new legal crop. However, many farmers say the government aid dried up, leaving them impoverished. During his career, Petro has been a long-standing critic of how Colombia has battled drugs and fought its conflicts. Now the future of how the country tackles those problems are in his hands.